has already commented. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. Or from Bulgaria has. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna freeze that so I'm not burning a bandwidth both ways. Okay. This this gentleman is from uh, Bulgaria. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. It's not 4 a.m. So <laughs> <laughs> <It's not 4 a. m. laughs> ah, hello. I am Sheree, and we will be starting soon. Uh, we are going to give you a tour of this amazing bus conversion and introduce you to our friends Ben and Karen, who uh, have been nomads. Um, well, a month longer than Chris, yes. so longer than us. Ben has been doing this forever, and he picked up this great little hitchhiker one day. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually chaperoned their first date. <laughs> yes. It's been about 2000, since 2010 for me. <laughs> but we will give you a tour of this amazing conversion and tell you a little bit of its story. Um, this is probably the sweetest bus conversion I think on the road. Definitely. I may be biased, but I think they are too. You'd agree, right? I, I would definitely agree. I've seen a lot of bus conversions, and this is the I mean, this is the, the only primo. one I've ever seen with custom yoga mat storage, so... Yes, th this, this is the bus conversion of bus conversions. Eight-year project, right? Why don't yes. you do a walk around on Almost the outside? Exactly. I'll give a little t preview well, of the outside. For, for Ben to uh, come out and grace us with his bus. Gorgeous. Oh, somebody is in transit to Antarctica? How oh, cool. Oh my gosh. This is like just a work of art in every possible fashion. This is as pretty as a bus gets. Look at that shark fin on the back. Oh. <laughs> Curtis is swooning. <laughs> and where do you see the inside if you think the outside is cool? We just decided to do this on the spur of the moment, so we're just we can get all the ducks in a row here. Yes. But, uh, they, they invited us by to see this on our way up to pick up Hiki, and we're like, can we stream a tour? And <laughs> okay. Sure. And we've, we've actually done some really cool videos with these guys before we boiled water with Ben. It's actually a hit on your YouTube channel. It is. We have an amazing number of views on that video. On our induction, yeah. put yeah. that boil off. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can also get an. It's something you can also get an introduction to these guys in our rambling series. If you remember those old, where we used to uh, interview other nomads. Oh, and, and their uh, other bus. They are in their other bus. Mm -hmm. so, the previous one. Anyway, this is Ben and Karen. And uh, Ben was actually the first other full-time RVing nomad still working on the road that we met. Yeah. What year uh, was that? That was '08. I don't know. I think it was when we finally Could met. Yeah, yeah I think it was 2008. So before that, Chris and I had been on the road for two years, and you had been on the road for about two years. Yeah. And we'd only ever met retirees, yes. vacationers, things like that. And to meet someone else who was working on the road mm -hmm. in our age group was really cool. And then we ended up rendezvousing all across the country. At the time, he was in a. Uh, Pray The bus. <laughs> what, what, what year was your Prevo? It was a uh, 1997 uh, Liberty converted Prevo, yeah. or Prevost as some people call him. And we, we used to enjoy getting our little tiny Oliver next to his Prevo. <laughs> we were in a 17 foot travel trailer, us traveling together with a cat. He was solo. In, in a and rock star. Whose car did that used to be? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. And then he met Karen. Uh, that was perfect. the end of Ben has had the bus for one month longer than he's had me actually. So, yeah. <laughs> so we know his first love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. So yeah. when Ben was shopping for he got inspired by the movie RV really. Yeah. So he first saw a flexible. 
And so he started, was doing a lot of research on vintage buses. And when we were ready for something larger, we kind of were inspired by his research. And that's what led us to buying a vintage bus. And so we've been living in a vintage bus for seven years, seven years now. <laughs> and and I've been a story one for eight. Mm. And he's, he's finally living in a vintage bus now. Yeah. And we're moved on to a boat. <laughs> But this has been, this is a piece of art. It is so detailed, I mean, all the effort he has put into this over the years. So I'm gonna let Ben give you a tour. All right. Well, let's do the quick car story. Oh, okay, car story, yeah. yes, yeah, so you see two minis, the tail yeah. of two minis. The tail of two minis. Ben was, heart, heart was set on a red bus. Uh, you know, yeah, and I was actually gonna get a red vintage station wagon to pull behind it. Uh, 1957 Buick, I'll butcher the name, Cabaret Yellow or something. I'm a mini girl though, so it yep. was the mini stayed. Yeah, my so little that blue was Karen's mini, mini stayed with us. <laughs> and when we first got our bus, we were parked next to to, uh, the, to Utah, the, right? those or guys. St. George, yep. Utah, I think. Yep. And and we're like, hey, your mini matches our bus. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, well, we're about to turn it in on lease. And like, <laughs> it's already set up for flat towing. Mm -hmm. Well, we can fix this problem. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So so we bought the mini. How many years ago was that? Six, seven, six, seven, five and a half. Because yeah. we've had this car for almost oh, six yeah, yeah. years. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that used to be our mini. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, bus. Uh, as far as tour goes, on the outside, uh, up there, those uh, on both sides are awnings. The awning will come out to about the width of I don't know if you can see it or not, but this concrete pad that we happen to be parked next to, so it can shade the entire area. Then there are three lights on the outside on the side of the bus and there's a light that runs the entire length of the awning so therefore this outside area can be nicely lit regardless of what time of day it is and right over here that thing is a little camera there's one of these on three sides of the bus it can see 180 degrees this way and this way so i can see somebody standing at the front of the bus as long as they're not centered uh, just from that uh, little camera but you guys probably really want to see the inside. <laughs> Come on in. It's got an old school handle, like a school bus, to close the door if I want to close those guys out. <laughs> <laughs> and on the dash, this guy, little girl keeps us uh, company when we're driving. You gotta interface that into your Alexa voice control system. <laughs> What's it gonna do? I don't know. <laughs> and here's the rest. In the front, we have two sofas, so it kind of his and hers arrangement. And they come out to three different positions. This position is for sitting normal style on a sofa. And then if you want to instead lay on it sideways, this can be a little skinny. So this can slide out to meet this black area at the bottom and then the two can also slide all the way together so they touch and the backs behind the sofas would slide down to fill in the gap uh, for that at the bottom here on this side since Karen's a yogi is custom yoga mat storage and since we're both photographers on the opposite side there is custom tripod storage so we got two tripods and a monopod in there and if I were to lift the cushions, we could also fit just shy of a case of wine uh, also within there. Got the kitchen. The kitchen's special because it gets much bigger if you want it to. I can reach down and undo a little catch and then pull this out. And both ends of the kitchen can come out so that you can get a C-shaped kitchen. And I don't know that you can see it from that angle, but this side is an appliance garage. So you have blenders and mixers and things. They remain plugged in, and you just grab them and set them up here on top to use it. And when you're done, you just put it right back where you found it. And then you can slide that in if you want to get it out of the way. Uh, the other side is more of a pantry where you can have you know, dry goods and oils and stuff. My question, what kind of wood is that? Oh, man. I always get two woods mixed up in my head. I can first tell you the wood on the ceiling is uh, vertical grain Douglas fir. Uh, this is either Makora or Sapele. For some reason those two are in the same bin in my head. But one thing that's a ridiculous 
detail about the bus is we bought a tree. And <laughs> all of the dark wood is all from a single tree. Um, therefore, all the grain and all the dark wood matches. And if we ever want to replace anything, it'll not match because the grain won't be the same. Uh, so that's kind of abs absurd. <laughs> Do you have the rest of the tree anywhere? We used it all up. <laughs> the kitchen, the sink goes all the way over to here. But you don't lose the drawer that's underneath at all. This is full height. And that's so you can put stuff in here and it can drain into the sink. And the sink can have various accessories put into it. Here's a cutting board for like chicken. You can flip it over and use it for other things. Or I can go down here and if I want to do vegetables or just have a nicer chopping block, that fits in as well. And other accessories. Mm -hmm. uh, so the whole thing is is set up nicely. This you can put at any angle you want and it stays put and then you can just turn it on and use it. Can you swing it out the window and use it as an outdoor shower? <laughs> I <probably laughs> didn't even notice idea. the window wasn't open. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you could. Nice. Uh, induction cooktop there. Uh, yeah, two burner induction. Here's our little uh, uh, paper towel holders here and if you open this you can tilt the paper towel and behind it is where you store the rest of the rolls that come in the pack. Uh, you can see our little spices, all that kind of stuff. Um, on this side is our workstations. Uh, so what some people would use as their dining place, but we use as our workspace. And there we have two iMacs that are back to back. One is actually hanging off of the other. Um, it's amazing. And these stay in place when we drive because they're bolted to this and this is bolted to the table. And the table has a steel plate which stabilizes it. Uh, here is my workstation and since I do a lot of photography, this is a printer uh, that can print 13 by 19 inches. It folds into the aisle uh, out when I want to print and when I'm done with it I just roll it back in. I don't even have to get out of my booth. If I need paper for it, I just reach my hand up here. There's the paper. Um, and there's all sorts of custom storage everywhere. Right here in this area there's a PC laptop if I were to open this up. Right here there's paper. Right there there's extra ink. Over here there's a panel that opens. And if I wave my hand. Oh nice. Uh, Auto lights. Cool tools. Storage there. Nice. Underneath it's a little bit of a mess right now but on the wall under there is the big black box is a subwoofer so that we can watch movies and have good sound because we have the sub and if you look towards the front of the bus where Karen's yeah. standing she'll you be Nana and point out where the TV is. May, make the TV come down. <laughs> uh, we don't want to kill Karen <laughs> and I uh, might need to get on the computer to do so at the moment. The voice controls are not active just yet. Well I'm not on <laughs> Wi-Fi on my phone so but if I were to get over here can go to media and and uh here comes press the button for the blinds too uh 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 what do we want uh black blinds shading let's go to night down there we go instant movie time now the, the front doesn't quite have automatic yet. No, we have to manually cover the front. Uh, it's one of the very few manual things <laughs> in this bus. <laughs> so let's get some more light in yes. here. The TV is amazing. And you can hardly even tell it's there when it's up. And if you look on my computer screen on the left side, once that goes up, you can see on the each side there's a speaker. And then below that, Center channel there. The center channel and dash. And if you look up, it's just a little crack that tells you there's something hiding. Blind and behind sun. Chris are speakers up here, which are the rear channel speakers. And then over here on my screen, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but either on my phone or my computer, I could use the normal remotes, or here I can turn my amplifier on, I can turn my Blu ray on, hit play. Um, put the TV up or down, 
and do all that kind of stuff. And I can do that also, I use this to do the shades as well. If you keep going back, here's a fridge. This one's just a kind of door fridge. And then we have two drawers. This is a freezer and this is another fridge. So you just pull them out, get to whatever you want. And they have little latches here to make sure that they can't move when we're driving. Those securely hold them. This side, his and hers camera bags go in there. A little extra storage just for random stuff. And here's like our energy monitoring um, setup. Big Tron. Let's see. Oh, there, there we go. go. Not pulling too much power right now. And down here is a vacuum cleaner that stays on its little uh, charging base. First Stereo aid kit and all that. Yeah, this is a Blu-ray uh, receiver and then there's an Alexa up there. What's the weather today? She'll talk to you in a minute. <laughs> and there's also an Apple TV. Keep coming. And let's see, I'll get out of your way so you can pass. Okay. And I'll open uh, this door. I'm going to close off the front of the bus. And now, uh, here we got the shower. Like or you need to get your phone. <laughs> <laughs> right now I will. Uh, yep, I'm on the Wi Fi. I like your shirt. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually going to put the shade up that's in here, and so I'm going to go to App Night. Can, can you flush the toilet with the app too? Um, no, there's a button right there. <laughs> <laughs> On this side, there's the shower, and uh, it's got a folding door, which we secure when we're driving. A huge rubber band comes around and grabs both here, a little knobber, and there's a doodad there. Old, uh, I'll oh, show it right, right here. Okay. I'll step into the shower. Just outside the shower would be your uh, towel, and it sits on a hood ornament from an old Chevy. There's three of those in the bus. That's amazing. And the other one is right above the toilet, where the second towel is. The toilet's got a great view. Yes, it does. And uh, nice corner sink. Mm -hmm. All set up. And if you go further back. You can open you both of these doors. Here. I'll get out of the way. Okay. If you open that door, you get your full length mirror. And here's Karen's dressing area. Here's my own. So you can access both to uh, get clothing after you come out of the All shower. The custom cabinets are gorgeous. And if this door, which I'm not going to open, it was closed, you'd have a whole private area throughout here uh, when you take a shower. Laundry bin is in the area under the bed. And then we'll let Chris get back there. The bedroom is, is a uh, little nook mm -hmm. with a queen size bed. That's it. We call it the Creative Cruiser. There is one other detail, which uh, I don't know if you noticed when we were walking through, which is up on the ceiling, and that is there is a uh, custom wood um, thing that runs the whole length of the bus for the most part, and this hides two rooftop air conditioning uh, units and two vent fans and some electronics, and it also makes it so the um, Air conditioning is ducted, so it's you know distributed throughout the bus, but it hides it all, so you don't usually see all those plastic grates that would usually be uh, in an RV. So I think that's most of the show. Off the, the engine bay, or uh, I'm not going to open it necessarily because I have to find the little uh, <laughs> key that turns it. But if you want to just look yeah. at the outside, beautiful dash. And you don't have a vintage engine, right? So no, I have a modern engine story. It's a Cummins ISC with an Allison six-speed automatic. 
Uh, we got it out of a, an RV that had been in a front end collision, but the engine was in the rear, and so it was unaffected, and so we got all that. On the outside of the bus, there's a whole bunch of customization. Uh, this stainless wouldn't usually be on the outside. Older models of the same bus would have that, but we found some vintage uh, stainless and put it on. These weren't here, but I put them on in the front. These weren't here, there was a different style. This wouldn't usually be here. It would be on an older model, if Chris can keep up. <laughs> um, and what else on the outside? Can you change the destination sign? I can't. Is it a rotate or is it a... It's, uh, I have to put the TV oh. down and then there's a little manual crank to, and it has about a dozen scenes. Nice. Uh, it's got uh, water on a reel so that we can electronically pull it in, you manually pull it out. Um, it's in there. There's also water filtration in here. And then here there are electronic uh, dump valves. Mm -hmm. No need to open this unless you feel like using it. You can do it on the computer, your phone, a remote, anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, to deploy a slick while you're being pursued down the highway? It, we, it could be done, but it is uh, actually, a, you'd have to go out of your way. <laughs> um, and then we, we don't have storage under the bus. That's all water tanks and things. Our water tanks are massive. This has got 256 gallons of fresh water. Uh, and so we can go for a long amount of time. Our, our storage is actually in this area on both sides of the bus. Uh, it's also where there's a bunch of electronics, like our inverters, uh, in there. Uh, how big are your black and gray tanks? Oh, I'd actually, I have to actually look it up. I could tell you in a few minutes here, but uh, all I remember off the top of my head is the fresh. Um, but probably by the time we're done walking around here, <laughs> I will have looked up. Oh, it's making me log in, and I don't remember my password. We'll see if it happens to be this one. So I could answer no incorrect password. Unfortunately, I can't okay. look without my computer. Um, so the engine's in here, Cummins ISC. You can see another camera here, so we can see out the back. And I can also see all the way down to our tow bar. So when we hook up the car, I can tell if one side is collapsing or not. You know, if both uh, sides have engaged. Uh, in the back, this wasn't originally here. These weren't originally here. Uh, these are special ones that have three... Uh, turn signals, stop sign, and running lights all in one in their glass vintage ones. Um, on this roof there are, I think there's 500 watt panels up there. How much lithium inside? There's uh, 540 amp hours at 24 volt, which is how many watt hours? He's doing math in his head right now. a lot of watt hours. <laughs> So if you're used to a 12 volt system, then you'd have to double that. And then you'd also have to go higher if you're used to normal batteries because you wouldn't be able to use their full capacity. There, well, it's still back there. It's just not currently hanging. Uh, let's see. We're on curved side, so let's extend. Oh, here we are. Just pressed a button on his app. And then let's see if we can turn on the exterior curb lights. You can tell they're on, on, but they're there. Yep. And then the uh, curb awning light. You can see it on the edge, Ooh, right up there. Nice. And you have an identical this. awning on the other side, right? The exact it's same thing on the other side. We can also um, dump from either side of the bus. Uh, we have to be on the driver's side to fill with water, though. Uh, and yeah, nicely set up. Nice. And then if it gets windy out. Are, they, are these Gerard awnings? Yeah, they're Gerards, and they have motion sensors. So if this ends up doing something like this because of the wind, it'll start going in. also have uh, leveling jacks that are hydraulic so you can see one of them kind of under there. Four, four jacks? Uh, four jacks. Those are Bigfoot uh, hydraulic jacks. So when we park if we're not on a level surface that'll get us level 
and we can also raise up the the bus uh, and I think I've had it where the back tires have been off the ground so if you really needed to change a tire we might mm -hmm. be able to um, very cool it's got a torsion bar suspension which is relatively smooth when you're driving um, and it's a 1963 flexible Starliner. And where? History of the bus before it was converted? I uh, do have a history. It was originally a bus for a New Mexico school, high school, and it would be the band and the football team, I think, would take it out to various events. Uh, I have the full history of it on my website that's related to the bus, which is uh, creativecruiser.com. And so I know the f every owner that's had the bus since it was new, uh, which is kind of fun. And it was kind of fun how I learned that because I just happened to run into a picture of the bus on somebody's website. And it said that he used to own it. It looked like mine, but I wasn't sure. So I contacted him and he gave me, I think, the serial number or something so we could confirm it was the same bus. And so he told me the early history and the person I bought it from told me the later history. And the two connected together so I knew the full history, which is kind of fun. And then this was um, repowered in Texas um, at a place called Trackmaster Fabricators. And the interior was made in Oregon at a place called Paradise Coach in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, and it was painted in Drain, Oregon. I can't remember Troy's name of his place, but, um, or not Troy, um, Mike Wilson. Um, and that's pretty much it our full-time home it's a an eight-year project right yeah it's only been on the road for a couple months now and uh, we did make it all the way from uh, Eugene Oregon uh, to here at, near Tampa Florida and we'll be here until April Fool's Day and then we'll start exploring the country again in it how, how does it drive compared to your old bus uh, it feels more like driving a minivan as far as uh, getting around traffic and things although it does not currently have power steering so that when you slow down to you know three miles an hour or something it becomes harder to steer and therefore pulling into a tight RV park or making a u-turn is not as fun as it could be um, so uh, otherwise it's not bad uh, how long is it in size this is much smaller than your last bus right? this is whoa, is it 34 feet 34, 36. It's either 34, 34 or 36 is 34. what I was going to say. 34. I think 34, 34 technically longer than you, but longer. Half of it's uh, 96 inches wide, whereas most RVs are 102, I think. Mm -hmm. So we're a little bit skinnier. Uh, it has more ground clearance than our old ones and is not as tall. Um, if I had the password in my one little <laughs> thing, I, my note taking app, I uh, just happened to ask for the password, which almost never does. Then I'd know how tall it is. I'm thinking 10 and a half feet, but I could be wrong. Um, Maybe. Now. Any other questions pop up in the... Yeah, I got a picture up if you want to, I can do this uh, the old-fashioned way. This is what the bus looked like when Ben purchased it. <laughs> is it blue? Yes. There, oh, up. there we go. And it had a knotty pine RV interior in it, but it its largest closet was less wide than my body. Some of you would say that that doesn't mean that it's small. No, um, it just means it was like a coat closet so also the bathroom and the kitchen were massive in size compared that's to everything Ben's else last bus so that's the bus that ben lived in when we met him you've had up on the screen aside the the our, our oliver and your old bus next to each other right uh i don't know if i had it next to each other but i can probably get that <laughs> oh i can get it that's oh. funny. Oh, Shereen, I, I was going to look up the <laughs> tank capacity, but okay. uh, hold on. Yes, okay. Uh, I, sh I might have it here in a moment. I love that. Uh, actually, I want to get a close-up view of that double lap, the double uh, iMac setup. Okay, here you go. Here's the... Oh. Uh, oh, here we are. These the are on opposite ends, but in reality, this is a 360-degree uh, panorama, so in reality, we were parked right next to each other, and I just happened oh, to... There's the Combo shot. To so stitch it. That's 2010? Uh, that is, if I get out of this view, uh, 2009, Nine. April. Oh gosh. Um, and oh, where's our light painting shot there? Right? Yeah, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also have this one of you guys, a panelage. We had so much fun. <laughs> 
And I was going to look up, don't Here's the combo don't show my screen right now, because there's personal information okay. that would appear. Nothing there. Uh, there Dual IMAX. Okay, you amazing. wanted to know about, you, know, you don't need to show it here because there's no. a lot of other info. Okay. okay, fresh tank is 256 gallons. Gray tank is 198. Mm -hmm. And black tank is 129. Wow, those are huge. Yes. And, and you can run your air conditioner and everything completely off of your inverter system. Uh, yes, we have two 5,000 watt inverters. We also have a, I have to see if I'd be right, I think it's 240 um, amp 24 volt alternator on the engine, mm -hmm. which would also make it so I can generally run that kind of stuff while driving. Um, so actually, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we, we, our Victron uh, inverter, well, I got turned on to that because Ben had researched Victron way back when, when he started researching his bus project. Now we've had ours for six and a half years and oh, did the lithium and everything else. <laughs> and, well, you bought your inverters a couple of years ago. They just kind of yeah. sat in the boxes for a while. Where they sat installed on a wall without <laughs> wires going to them. Yeah. Yes. There are other things in the bus that's different. On the outside of the bus, you will find no handles, uh, locks, uh, or similar things uh, for any of the doors. And that's because uh, there are hidden little uh, electronic locks that don't use a standard key. I'd have to grab my key over here. The key for the bus looks like this. Ooh. And this uh, is something where I hold it up to a particular spot on the bus, and then it will open the door for me, you know, whatever door I'm trying to go for. And each one of these has a serial number, so if I give one of these to somebody at a bus shop for them to work on my bus, I can tell them exactly how many times they opened uh, the door, and I can lock the door on them uh, remotely, uh, that kind of stuff as well. So that's what the keys look like. Um, and we can do things with remotes. Here's a little remote. We have one of these. This one's actually going to go in the car, our Mini Cooper. And the top button will unlock the front door. The middle button will turn the lights on inside. The bottom one will turn the lights off and all that. So just like your garage door opener you might have in your car, we'll have one for our bus. So I just need to get some Velcro to install that. And you've got your magic light switches, which are going to be potentially changed around. Yeah, they're down the hall here. Um, yeah, right now he has to use a, a computer to turn a light on. But and the reason for that is because I haven't finished programming these. Yes. These are light switches where each one of these little side areas are buttons. In the screen in the middle, I can program. So just like when I press that, it lights up more. I could press one of these and it would send me to a sub-menu on here, like for air conditioning. And then this could be the up button and the down button for temperature. Uh, that type of thing. I've programmed the interface as far as what the icons look like but I haven't gotten around to programming the actual functionality where, where they actually do anything. So that makes it a little bit frustrating. I have to use my phone or the computer to do some uh, of the tasks in the bus. We, we got a phone call and Ben was on the side of the road and he'd broken his Windows laptop and uh, it was the only way he could uh, turn on his lights and stuff and the sun was setting so I had to help him figure out how to get his Mac to connect. Yeah, here's the laptop. <laughs> this is the only PC I have and I don't know if you can see it. I have to get the light just right but the screen is smashed. And when that happened, that's... He, could, he couldn't turn the lights on. <laughs> yeah, so we're still in progress with a few things. We're optimizing things. But uh, hopefully between now and April, when we hit the road again, the majority of those projects will be wrapped up. This is the most amazing bus conversion, period, anywhere. <laughs> <sighs> so should we wrap this up? Yeah, Get back to get all four of us. Yeah. Hey, let's try and say goodbye. Hey. Thank you for joining this impromptu live stream. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for sharing that your home with us oh, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. everybody out there. Too. And uh, thank you guys for joining in. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we are on our way to pick up Zephyr, our vintage bus, and hitting we the road. We do too. need to get our buses parked next to each other. That oh, has to happen. <laughs> buses yeah. and minis converge. Oh, the little circle. So yeah. Great. yeah. So so yes, they all have to be in one place. That's got to happen. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, guys. We're gonna get back to hanging out with these guys okay. and. Uh, See y'all later. Bye. Yep. <laughs> That's so great. I love that. Hey. Got to turn that awning light and these outside lights.